again, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do a watercolor, um, but we're going to do it a little bit differently than some of my other ones. We're going to try something I've never really tried before with some new kind of paper and backing. It's called uh, something called Aquaboard, um, and it's, it's actually a watercolor paper that is mounted on a sturdy, hard board like a masonite board or something like that. And it's supposed to have uh, characteristics of watercolor paper. And uh, I haven't tried it before, but I want to try it. And so we're going to give it a, a shot today and see how it works. Um, so you'll be able to see me use it for the first time. And if I make mistakes and screw up too badly, you won't see this video. But if I get it done somewhat to my satisfaction, I will post this video on YouTube. Anyway, um, we have a scene here from uh, uh, the California area of Monterey. It's sort of a garden scene with a little fountain and a, a building in the background and some nice plants in the front. And uh, so we're going to be uh, painting on this aqua board by Ampersand. It's a 11 by 14 inch flat panel and uh, it's made by, I think I said that, Ampersand. And, uh, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm going to be using my standard uh, paints uh, that I've had before. I'll go through the paints very quickly and uh, the brushes as well. I'm using my uh, brushes by Sterling Edwards, uh, the uh, one inch flat. I have a three quarter inch flat by Windsor Newton, a half inch flat. I have three rounds. I have a 12, an 8, and a number 4. And I have a script liner from American Painter that we'll be using. Um, I don't know if I'll use all of those or not, but uh, if I do, I've at least told you what they are. They're also on the front of the video. I usually put a little uh, beginning entry on the video so you can see what the paints are. But I'll tell you them here quickly. Um, going around the palette, we have uh, neutral tint. We have cyan blue, ultra blue, ultraviolet, crimson lake, garnet lake, cadmium red, burnt sienna, raw sienna, yellow ochre, have a Kubrick green, golden lake, limon yellow, primary yellow, and on the inside row I have burnt umber, I have sap green, Auvignon orange, primary red magenta, and a beautiful still to grain brown. These were all paints by My Mary Blue. They're wonderful Italian transparent watercolors, and uh, I really like to use them. Uh, I've used them for several of my uh, commissions, and. Uh, so uh, with that said, I think we'll get going here. I've got the uh, sketch already on the paper, and uh, it's ready to go. So I'm going to paint on this aqua board just as I would regular watercolor paper and see how it reacts. Um, you're going to see it here first, and uh, I have no idea how this is going to work, if it's going to work, but uh, that's the fun of painting, get the experiment. So I'm going to start with wetting the top of this board here where I want the sky and I'll see how that works. I'm just putting in some clear water here uh, around the top of this building in the sky area and, and around these trees. Some of these trees are going to be softened uh, a little bit in the distance, picking up a little bit of the uh, graphite off of my drawing here but that's okay actually runs a little more on this paper I've noticed than it does on some of my other paper um, it's got uh, I think the surface is a lot smoother even though it's uh, has a little bit of tooth to it like a cold press paper um, it is uh, a lot smoother to the brush stroke it appears to me Okay, so the sky, what are we going to put in the sky? Uh, the photograph, I have, uh, I didn't show you the photograph, but I will overlay that on the video when I do the final editing. Um, and the, uh, I also have my value map, as uh, you may remember, I do that most of the time. So let's uh, try just a little bit of blue in here, see what happens. Ultra blue. Um, the sky. Um, 
seems to go on a lot drier than uh, how about a little bit of raw sienna here. Try a little bit of that back in here somewhere around this chimney in the back behind these trees. Maybe a little more over here. Um, put a little gray in there. Put a little of my uh, burnt sienna on top of my blue and that will give me a nice little gray color in some of this area here. Okay. Interesting the way it uh, takes paint in a dry brush. It's hard to get, seems to get hard, hard to get soft edges here. Um, so be careful. I'm going to put a lot of hard runs in this. I don't want hard runs necessarily. Okay, let's put that in and just leave it like that. There's a hard edge forming right there. I don't think it has the absorbency, that uh, paper that's not mounted on a board like this has. I think the paper has, the fibers tend to maybe move around a little more and let more uh, paint soak in than it does on this particular board. I don't want to mess that sky up too much. I keep getting back in there. Maybe it will. Interesting way it handles the paint. Okay, so that's enough for the sky. Let's uh, let that set for a while. I am getting a little back run here, I see. Using my one inch brush, see if I can feather that out a little bit so it's not quite as obvious. Back run here, yeah. It does react differently than uh, paper that's not on a glued to a backing board. All right, let's look at this. Uh, try this um, building here. I want to get some nice colors for now this is wet on dry. using a burnt sienna and a little bit of my cad red. The sun is sort of coming from the left here. So this building will be a little darker. colors here, pick a little ultra violet to gray it down just a little bit. I can over here. I'm painting around the top of this fountain that sits here. There's a door back there. Okay. Let's set and see what happens. It gets it definitely runs more than on regular paper. Okay. Do the side of this building here. It's kind of in shadow from the tree. Let's put some
Yep, it definitely runs more. Hmm. Interesting. paint is on there it just runs like crazy right over the top of it they advertise this that you're supposed to be able to put multiple layers on let it dry and come back and put more layers on uh, get number a number of glazes on it over here all right so we got the front of that building the side of the building oh, what do I want to do next the sky is still a little damp I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, some green in there pick up a little sap green and maybe a little lemon yellow if I can get some trees over here. Not very not very dark, is it? And some a little bit of ultra blue will darken it down. in there maybe lighten it up a little bit in some areas well it's interesting to try a new approach Let me see here. Try just a little more of this. I'm down around this fountain with some greens. I'll we'll stop it right there at the top of the fountain, hopefully. Let it set for a while. I don't know if you can do any scraping in here or not. It's too... Uh, wet probably um, on the other side over here on the left side we have considerably darker greens so I'm gonna make up a blue a bluish green mixture here for the left side and start putting a few tree like in there maybe I'll see if that helps change the color of green a little bit don't notice it too much so far I'm only using this large one inch brush even a few air holes here sky holes
Putting some different colors of yellows in here, either the lemon yellow or the uh, primary yellow. Sort of give myself some different flavors of green. Paint around this tree trunk here. Okay, uh, we'll let that sit for a while and think about it and see what it looks like. Step back. Okay. Have this roof in here of this building. It's sort of a, I guess it's a little bit of a grayish, reddish gray. So let me work on a little bit of a reddish gray color with my ultra blue and burnt sienna maybe a touch of cad red see what we can do back here pick up some lighter colors Different, different, different. That's the roof. Put just a little bit of that over here on this edge. It's a actually has tile on this roof, so it's not a even roof. It's got tiles sticking up, coming down, over, and then underneath. It's a little darker underneath. A bit of uh, a little paint's gray to that. See if I can darken it down just a little here. Yeah, something like that. Over here, the same thing. Only I'm going to change the color a little bit so it's not exactly alike. Uh, there's a run. Get it before it goes too wild. This is more of a challenge painting vertically with this uh, aqua board than it is with regular paper because it's not as absorbent. Probably more like painting on uh, hard pressed paper, I want to say, maybe. I don't know. I haven't tried hard pressed paper too often. And I haven't ever tried hard pressed paper in a vertical painting process like I do here. So we'll give it a try and see what it looks like here. I'm going to have some interesting runs here and there. Just blot them out if I can. Adds a little different texture to the building. Okay, how are we doing here? Let's see. Well, we're getting an interesting look on it. And we've been going... ...20 minutes. I'll just take, make sure this video is lined up. It looks like it's a little bit out of the window. Alright, I'm back to my painting. I have to do my technology break. Check my cameras. I've got tree branches in here. So I'll just put a few of those in now while I got this color in my brush. It's similar to the similar to what's there. I'm gonna add some more browns to it, lighten it up a little bit. Photograph, it's really dark, but I'm not gonna make it that dark. <clears throat> Oh, 
I'll make it darker, but I won't make it as dark as the photograph, which is almost black. dark shadows under there. Something like that. A few dark places under here that sort of mix with the bottom of that tree. Okay. Get in some other colors down here maybe that uh, ochres and some greens. <clears throat> it's kind of like a big garden. It's got these trees in it and a lot of beautiful plants. All right. Okay. Now, what else can I do with this big brush while I got it here? I've got plenty of some more areas of green. I'm gonna I gotta change my green color. It's getting boring. With all these yellows and with the different blues, it's possible to get many different colors of green. that runs along here and I'm going to put some bright yellow on the other corner and see if I can touch some of that in up here at the top. It is getting a little bit of sun here and there. Putting this on kind of thick, kind of dry. The other green is down here. So it's getting shadow from the tree. It does have a little bit of green that comes up this way on the side of the building. Like this. brush I'm going to keep keep working on here some of this these green bushes the top of these bushes are getting a lot of sunlight like right in here so they really kind of pop pop out it's probably too too bright but I can always lighten it up a little bit over here put in a few Pop in just a little bit of red in there, get some orange color. Come back to my green in here. So we're just making bushes. So all connect together here. Painting along the top of this Backside this fountain here. There. OK. 
Okay. Always take a minute to step back, take a look, see if it's looking the way you want it to. Fairly quickly here, we're getting a, a lot done. <clears throat> side of this so this is all part of the top of this the fountain's got a gray rim around it mm, and it's a rock wall down here I leave room for the rock okay there we go all right Make a few more. Make that not quite a straight line across there. Yeah. Another layer. Darken it up on the bottom. see I'm gonna get my other brush a little smaller brush this uh, one half inch flat and work with it for a little while and see if I can get some uh, some of this fountain in and uh, before I do that I'm gonna put a few more darks in these trees on the right and sort of give it a little more depth I don't have nearly enough depth in there I need at least three values if I can get three values Push up, push. Crazy brush strokes. Maybe able to uh, put in a few vertical things that look like instead of scraping out sometimes if you can't if you have a hard surface like this, you can use something like a squeegee or paper towel and pull out. And you'll make some things that look like tree trunks. All right, I want to go back, clean out a little bit of my palette here. <clears throat> Give myself some room to make some grays. Leave some of that green in there. I want to come back to that probably, but let's uh, look for some gray. I'm going to take a little of my Payne's gray to start with. Ultra blue. That's a good dark black mixture, dark blue mixture. I start adding in some burnt sienna over here. I'll start getting a gray color. Several different shades of gray. Depending on how much water I put in how light I want to make it, how much red I want to have in it. <clears throat> okay, so this fountain has some dark shadow on the right side here. It's not very dark.
couple of brown. Values. <clears throat> the values have to be different, otherwise they can't tell one shape from another if you leave them too, too similar in value. So I have to make this stand out a little bit <clears throat> from the values behind it. I can either make the green behind it darker or make this a little darker. And I'm choosing right now to make this a little light darker and sort of blend it into what's there. It's actually a waterfall that comes out of here. Water's actually coming out of a little opening and down. And then these other sides are sort of bluish. Just a little more, <clears throat> a little more red in there as we come down the front of this. Fountain. Leaving room for flowers and shrubs on the front of this. So I'm doing a little negative painting here. that looking. Looks like it could be a fountain. <clears throat> okay, these rocks are repeated. Over in this area here we have a lot of rocks. With a lot of different, some dark underneath and like a fence back there, if I can make it look like a fence. A barricade actually of, of, of rocks that are making the side of the path that walks along behind this back in here. So we want to do that. <clears throat> Let me come back and touch those up later, but I'll put in some more rocks along this side of the path. Come back and add some darks in after that and make them, uh, give them some value, some shadows. 
that will make them look three-dimensional. There's a rock, there's another rock here, one there. Okay. <clears throat> side of this building back here while I'm at it I might as well put a few doors and windows back here Make it darker couple doors here that door has some flowers over the front of it so the door back here has Okay, there, let's put a little cap on this door. Put some darkers up, dark, up here. This makes there's a lot of <coughs> shadow here that I don't really have fully painted in, but put that down like this. There's a more a bit of a shadow that's hitting it. Okay, similar color for this walkway down here. There's a walkway that goes back behind here. Lighten it up a little bit, change the color a little bit. This way. And they lay this way here. Same color. That. And then there's a bit of a shadow that's where it comes down here and it's gonna <clears throat> put it on too soon I'm trying to do this too quickly probably but put some shadows in here under these this rock wall I think I called it a fence a while ago it's not a fence it's a rock wall some really interesting shadows that come out over this. Okay, this wall back here has some darks in it as well. Around the rocks, under the rocks. Make it look like some rocks back there. So the verticals and the horizontals will make it look something like there's rocks in there. Okay, see if I can darken this down a little bit more now.
Okay. And we have some more flowers in there. Flowers over here. Some shadows in here, maybe like this. Okay, interesting, I've been going about 42 minutes, I just got to put in some flowers in the front here, and uh, I'm going to get my, my big round brushes here and see if I can make it work uh, with some more of these greens, and I'm going to pick up some reds, maybe a little bit of this magenta here. Some bright flowers in there. Um, I need a lot of this green. <clears throat> Multiple green colors in here. Put that in, throw in some reds. It's not very red. Pop in some red there, and there we go. Come back and put some shadows under it. Pick up some greens, throw in there. All this down here is just sort of nondescript stuff. I want you to don't really want you to look at all that much. So I'm not going to paint it in very distinctly do have some bushes that sort of stick out here like this. Come back, pick up some bright yellows on top of that, throw in there. <clears throat> pick up some darks. Where'd my dark go? Blues and Just letting the brush do the talking here. I'm not uh, trying to force any particular colors out other than I'm trying to make it look like it's a lot of abstract shapes and bushes down here. Add some bright yellows. Come back and pick up some magentas down here. Let's finish it off with some something that's not very descript. Like that. <clears throat> now you can really spend a lot of time on this kind of brush. Bushes. Some more over here. Put these in. And I want them to have some more darkness in there. I'm not overly crazy about this aqua board. It does have some interesting characteristics, however, and I probably need to spend more time learning how to use, take advantage of. Um, So that looks a little bit like a walkway going back there behind that fountain. Keep this right edge a little darker, probably. Just don't want you looking and wandering over here. So let's throw in some basic 
bush shapes over there. Side of the brush, just throw them in. And keep this, I like this magenta color here sort of coming up. There's a lot of little flowers that sort of stick up here in these areas. So I'm going to just come back and touch some of those. Put in a few oranges maybe with it to change the color a little bit. <clears throat> Something like that. There's a whole lot of these little flowers sticking over there. A few sticking out here even. Don't want to overdo it, I'll end up with a mess. You may think it's a mess already. I'm going to throw a splatter on there, <clears throat> pick up a little liquid of this dark color. That will help give it a little texture. Um, and the right side up here on the right, I left off some, put a few more bushes in over here. Doesn't look quite finished. Picking up some uh, there. A bit of blue. Make sure we highlight the top of this fountain over there. And a few yellows to sort of bring the colors together. All right, what else can I do to this? Abstract shapes, abstract shapes. Oh, I forgot the chimney on top. Get that little job in here. A lot of this down and let it be drying a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, I don't like the way it runs. It really, it's like hard, hard paper, almost minimal absorbency here, I'm finding. does pick up however I see these runs right here if I just lay a little water on clear water on top you can pick them up so maybe the advantage is is that it may run but you can also maybe pick those up easier than you can on uh, paper where it soaks in a lot more got some shadows here from the trees A few more dark. <clears throat> Over here, a little darker on the right side. All right, I think I'm going to call this one finished. It's got a lot of bright color in the center, kind of pulls your eye in there. Little reds. Fountain is not overly distracting. Um, and that's kind of the way I want it to be. I think I'm going to just add just a few more touches of color on part of this to make sure that it stands out a little bit from the background.
All right, I better stop. <clears throat> okay, I'll zoom back and say, hope you like this painting. I hope you give it a try. I'm not uh, totally sold on the uh, aqua board, but uh, you never know until you try these things. So uh, I thought I would uh, show you my attempt to try to experiment with it. So uh, this may make it on YouTube. If I get finished editing it, I don't like it, you'll never see it. But uh, if you see it, at least I think I did some reasonable job. So anyway, until I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Thank you for watching. Bye.